Hello again, and welcome to the Cryptonary Podcast. Stan, Mal, how are you guys doing today? Doing well. What about All you, Victor? I'm doing great. Um, today we're talking about the smart money. I hope your money is smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stan, you just wrote this interesting report on, on what the smart money is doing um, ahead of 2024, how they're positioning their portfolios. Um, you, you brought so interesting projects that you think um, the smart money is starting to accumulate ahead of 2024. And the entirety of the reports gives us this narrative saying, this is out of position if you want to have head starts um, in 2024. And I think that that's super amazing. Um, do, do, you want us, do you want to quick run us through your thought process from top to bottom, how you came about this um, realization on those two projects? Uh, yeah, so just to get started, to get an idea of what we're talking about here, uh, the main thing I started looking at is what are whales, so big players in the market, looking to buy on-chain. And really two assets came to my attention. The first one is one probably a lot of our members already know a lot about, Robit. And then the second one is Matic, the token of Polygon. And what we really noticed there is that for the Robit, um, <clears throat> for Robit, there were some pretty big whales that were looking to accumulate RLB in the past week with one wallet, you know, having bought around a million, maybe around 800K worth of Robit and, you know, making like investments and DCAing into it over the week. And then I think the second wallet, which is more interesting, is a wallet that is holding around $37 million um, of his, you know, like portfolio in crypto right now. And 10% of that is um, in RLB. So that tells you that this will is betting big on Robit. At least in this wallet, like 10% of it is in it. And over the last week when Robit dipped um, to around 17, 18 cents, he decided to buy around 300K off that position. So it shows you that he isn't holding this uh, for like months already. He is steadily accumulating more RLB. So for me, that kind of, you know, made me look into the token again and say like, okay, what is the reason why these whales are buying now? And what I figured out is that RLB has been in a downtrend. It's been down around 20% from its highs around November 11. And in the same time, the average revenue Robit is generating and the amount of RLB that's being burned is up. So we're seeing revenues kind of go in the, into a different direction than price. And I think that's a big reason why these whales are looking into RLB as a trade or an investment, because the price has not been uh, catching up to the increase in trading volumes and revenues that Robit has seen. And Two days ago, or maybe actually yesterday, there was also a big announcement that Robit has launched a multiple different altcoins on this trading platform. And users can speculate on these altcoins with up to, I believe, 100x leverage. So it's also a very, you know, like interesting thing now that Robit is launching new altcoins on this platform. A lot of these are popular ones that a lot of people trade, like Injective, Blur, you know, like all the big names, I think Casper was one of them. And that is likely also going to increase the revenue and trading volume on Robit. And, you know, we'll just see more buyback and burns because of that. And really what these wills are doing is front running that because when Bitcoin starts ripping, more people will be trading on Robit. And when that happens, more RLB will be burned. That, that's super cool. I mean, talking about RLB, but there is another um i said you talked about in the report that's matic and um you said one whale just bet 2.64 million dollars on matic and another is betting i think 14 million on, mm -hmm. on matic so run us straight why, why, why are we putting this much money behind matic at this time yeah so the matic one is also very interesting we noticed like a lot of activity actually from coinbase because coinbase is one of the most uh, liquid exchanges where you can buy matic and what these wills have been doing is they have been using Coinbase to buy uh, Matic spot, and then they're withdrawing it to their wallets. 
So this tells me that these whales aren't just day trading, you know, because if you're day trading, you would keep your money on Coinbase. They're looking for mm -hmm. Matic in like the mid or long term. And one of them bought around a couple million. I think it was $2.6 million of Matic over the last few days. And the other one is a bit more complicated. So there are multiple wallets that all uh, bought around $2.8 million of Matic in the same time frame. I suspect that this is one person trying to hide his traces because if you would buy 10 million, a lot of these telegram trackers that track wheels, they would highlight it as a big transaction, but the threshold mm -hmm. for that usually is around $10 million, you know, because people, they don't want to read about a transaction of one or 2 million. So I think what this will did, he split his transaction in multiple different ones. So he won't get like tracked by these bots that we often see tracking wheels, but yeah, he couldn't escape me, of course. So I was able to figure <laughs> out his scheme and he bought around was, uh, yeah. four, $4 million of Matic. Sorry, Stan, why, why would a whale not want to be tracked in, but by people tracking him, for example, what would, I what mean, would the reason for that? you're kind of giving away your edge, right? Like, let's say you are managing 100 million or you're managing $50 million and you are looking to sell or buy an asset. If people track your transactions, they'll start front trying to front run you. So the moment he would withdraw his Matic back to Coinbase, other whales or other people that are tracking like wallets using these Telegram bots, they'll start selling their Matic before he can execute his his trades on Coinbase to dump it. So a lot of these whales, they split it into like different wallets and smaller transactions. So they stay under the threshold where something like a whale bot like highlights like 10 thousands of people of their moves. Okay, that that's makes... something that makes Cryptonary smart money much, much better than any whale truck out. They can obfuscate things, they can ID, they can cloak it, but they are not getting past Stan. <laughs> oh no i mean if, if if a guy is like making like these clips of of bio you know like transfers in like a day i can pretty easily notice a pattern you know especially when like these transactions were actually the only big transactions that day so it was pretty easy to see that this is one entity looking to accumulate matic and not like different people because they were also all um around the same amount and around the same time yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm afraid we're di di digressing away from the conversation a little bit. Ah, yeah. yeah. But I think this is actually no, no. It's fine. I think it's actually pretty critical, right? <laughs> you have like a personalized service where Stan is going in and then looking at it and telling you what's happening and providing some more context behind what the whales are doing. Yeah, and I do it manual. I'm not using a bot to. Uh... Highlight. I obviously have my ways to get highlighted, but then I actually use my own eyes and, you know, like my own skills to match up transactions and look at the actual flows instead of just like having a telegram bot that tells me, oh, Bitcoin has been bought and has been sent here. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more research that goes into this. Yeah, and then you get the richness of the nuance. You can fully understand the context. You can think about every other thing you, you've had. Sure. So speaking on context, I think what's really important to highlight is why these whales are looking to buy Matic. And one of the big reasons I think they're doing this is because there's a big upgrade coming to Polygon called Polygon 2.0. The first part of this upgrade has kind of already happened because Polygon has changed their token name from Matic to POL. And when a project does that, it kind of tells a lot, you know, there's a big rebrand going on. And the next step of this is the launch of a new blockchain, which the current Matic or Polygon blockchain will transition to. And this blockchain will be more secure than their current blockchain, but also more scalable as it's using technology called Validium. I won't go into the details of that. You can read it in the report. And next to that, Polygon has also been trying to create kind of like a multi-chain ecosystem where People can use the Polygon technology to build what they call super nets on top of it. Think of it like Polkadot, Cosmos, you know, like the whole idea of app specific chains. And they have been able to onboard OKX to this model. They have been able to onboard Immutable X to this model. 
there's a rumor that crypto exchange Kraken is trying to use Polygon technology to build their own chain. And at the same time, Polygon still has some pretty big announcements planned for their Polygon 2.0 upgrade in the coming months. So I think what these whales are doing is front running the news basically on this upgrade and potentially even holding Matic for the long term as what Polygon is doing is building like an entire new layer two ecosystem. And in my opinion, it's, you know, like pretty strong and solid technology, what they're building. Amazing. So let, let, let's tie it all together. Wales are holding a solid position in RLB ahead of what I think will be like a massive run in 2024 or when the bull market fully kicks off. And right now, the Wales are also starting to hold substantial positions in Matic because they believe that it's going through a major upgrade that will transform it into like a major player among its peers or competitors in the not too distant future. And before that happens, before the rest of the market catches on, the whales are already taking position in that. That's like the long and short of why whales are taking positions in RLB right now and Matic. Agreed. Yeah, totally, totally right. All right. Now, let me shoot some questions across to you, Stan. If, if you are a new crypto investor looking to have a strong 2024, would you say that Robit and Polygon are two must-have assets in your portfolio and why? Um, for me, definitely Robit RLB is one that I view as a must-have for myself. Obviously, non-financial advice. These are my own positions. But I think it's really a compelling bet because of the revenue they generate and the buy, back, and burn mechanism. So there's always like a floor, um, you know, there's always a buyer too in the market, which is Robit themselves buying the token with the revenue. So I think the downside there is relatively limited. While at the same time, the trading volumes they have and the revenue they generate with that, I think that will only go up as the market goes higher. Because the, you know, the higher Bitcoin goes, the more people will want to speculate on leverage. And Robit seems mm -hmm. to be like one of those places people can do that right now. So also with Binance now, like losing market share, I think Robit could even benefit from that, you know, when, while they're like launching all these new altcoins on their futures product. That, that, that's great. Now, this one, if you had to pick just one right now between Robit and Polygon, I mean, it's not an apples or oranges to oranges comparison. I know they are two different projects, but like these are two projects that you found to the compelling opportunities from the perspective of the wheels right now. So mm -hmm. if you have to pick between Robit and Polygon, what will you choose and why? Yeah, definitely Robit uh, because of the revenue aspect. Like uh, Polygon is a base layer, like a layer one, kind of like a layer two blockchain, I guess. So they don't generate like those revenues that Robit generates. So because I care a lot about revenue and, you know, the fundamental value of these tokens, I think RLB is a more compelling bet. But for me, Polygon is also an interesting swing trade, you know, but I would definitely put it second, not first. Okay. A another thing is, you know, the, the, the whole thing about smart money is getting an advantage over the rest of the market, like you get a competitive edge, right? So during your analysis, research and, and all of that, what's the most counterintuitive insights you've gained? in how whales seem to be playing Robit and Polygon at this time? So I think what it shows me is that these whales were, you know, like not scared to allocate at a time where these tokens were not performing that well. Like they're both uh, mm. down from their all time highs. And at the same time, you know, like these whales, they're not moving in the same direction as the market, I would say they're more contrarian. So they buy at moments when generally the market might be looking bearish from a technical perspective, for example, as they try to capitalize on things like fear, you know, and like fear and doubt of like retail holders that are maybe, you know, like panicking or like selling their positions. But then these wheels step in and they provide like a floor uh, where they are the, basically they're the, like the, the, the last buyer that steps in. Yeah? You know, I'm sensing a pattern here. And if you go back to the last two uh, smart money editions we had, you know, um, and solo and all of that, it seems to me that whales are much more comfortable buying during the dips than retail investors. It's and everybody should buy during the dips. But 
during the dips, that's when you get scared, but that's when the waves are buying. So what's the difference between the wave psychology and the retail investor psychology? Why are waves much more comfortable buying the dips than retail investors are? I mean, have, one reason... Any, 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 I mean... I think one reason is they're not betting with their whole net worth, you know, like if that's always something I tell to people who are new to crypto, like don't start trading with all your savings because you're going to panic and, you know, feel fear because the money you have in your account is too much to handle for you. While these wills, they probably have way more money, but maybe crypto is mm -hmm. only a small percentage of that, you know, for example, this guy, like his portfolio was around 30 million. And he had 3 million into Robit, but potentially like even that wallet is only like 10% of his entire net worth. You know, this guy mm. could be worth a hundred million in total. So I think they're managing money that is not like, if they lose a million dollars, it's not the end of their, of their world, you know? So I think they can trade more comfortably and also experience like people who have made that much money in crypto. They've probably made those mistakes in the past already and learned from it. Mal, do you have some insights to share on this? I mean, as a trader, like, so uh, what does that tell you about position sizing and, you know, playing with money you're comfortable with? Yeah, there's, a, I think Stan's 100% right. There's a massive, massive difference from a psychological point of view when you have quite a lot of capital to spare compared to when you don't. And, you know, traditionally smart money, <clears throat> I mean, that's like, <clears throat> that's a common theme across all markets anyway. There are people that are smarter, they have more capital. And when they are, making their um, investments or taking their trades that allocation of their portfolio if it's not going to have as big of an impact as it would say for a retail trader that may you know have a normal job who's trying to get involved and he's just trying to you know capitalize on on what he can to maybe flip money the difference in psychology is massive and it goes into mm. experience as well <clears throat> you can see it on the charts you can see it correlate especially when we're talking about matic you know i could even get a chart up if you wanted me to sure quickly. sure Okay, yeah, so let me share screen here. So Matic, Matic is a great example, okay? So for example, if we look at the daily time frame on Matic, what you see here, say if we were to get rid of this region of, of support and get rid of this as well. If you're a retail trader and you've been taught by textbooks or whatever you've been taught by YouTube videos or however you, you, you view the markets currently, if you see a bearish candlestick like this daily candlestick breaking support, that's a very negative signal for this asset that you're tracking. It basically is, essentially tells you that we're having a big sell-off, price is gonna drop. You have to also understand people may be looking at Matic on their phones and their wallets, and they've seen the price drop quite significantly. That daily candlestick there represents 12, 11%, nearly 12%. So mm. you'd be 12% down. Maybe some people would be, if you had less experience, like the retail trade tr uh, traders and investors, they don't have as much capital. Maybe Matic is quite high in terms of its responsibility to someone's portfolio. They'll be, that fear will rush into uh, a trader or investor's mindset with, with low experience when they see something like this. But then obviously you see, and Stan, didn't you say in the report that it was the 22nd of November? That we uh, seen this. Yes, we saw the 14 million uh, flow into Matic from Coinbase. Okay, brilliant. So we see the 14 million flow into Matic exactly on the 22nd of November. And that's where you see this bullish candlestick. And obviously as well, what you have to understand is <clears throat> in these markets, the way they work, in order for people to be able to buy, there has to be a counterpart. So everybody's selling, whether they're, especially on the leverage side, if they're selling, you know, that's providing liquidity for this smart money in order to get take these positions and buy so much of this asset. And you can see it so beautifully translated in the charts there. You know, you see a very scary bearish candlestick. The majority of the market will be very fearful, but then the big guys step in, they buy up and they're in profit. And it just, then it creates market structure, like Stan mentioned that a floor was made, but that floor actually translates as well over to past price action. So it's just, it is interesting when you view it like that and you see it like that. That's why we call them smart money. They're smarter than the rest. And obviously they, <laughs> yeah, they, they're, they're not smarter than Stan, um, <laughs> they're not smarter they, than Stan, but they are smart. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah. it's interesting when, when you put it like this. So at the moment when you're panicking, I, I, Mal, I like what you said, like there is always a counterpart to the trade. At the moment when you're panicking and selling, somebody else is buying and it's basically yeah. you're transferring your assets to them and then they go on and make profits on it. 100%, this, it, it, it's, 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 it's crazy when you actually think about it. And not many people understand how the markets work. But when you are participating in these markets, you're against a hell of a lot of people. 
And if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to get caught off. Like, you know, we like to say it could be get caught offside. That's a perfect example of being caught offside. You know, you're on the wrong side of the market. You're fearful. And then the big guys swoop in, they'll snatch your liquidity in order to make their profits larger. And that's, that's the aim of the game. The markets aren't here to be your friend. You know, everybody's trying to make money at the end of the day. So that's, that's what you have to also bear in mind. But yeah, you see it beautifully translated there on the charts into and what Stan's actually saying. It's also the beauty, I think, of the blockchain, you know, like in, um, let's say, Forex or um, in um, equities, it's much harder to follow these flows because a lot of it goes through brokers or like, you know, like these entities that are able to, you know, kind of like hide their books from you. Well, in crypto, because we can track like what's happening on these blockchains, we can actually present you like the exact transactions in where mm. some of these wills have been buying and selling, which to me only yeah. makes this whole space more interesting, you know? And if you're following crypto narrative smart money, you can know what, is, what the wills are doing. You can get insights into why they're doing it and then you can position your portfolio accordingly. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> All right, let, let, let's move on. I, I know you have a question, Mal, but, but we'll take that shortly. Um, so, so Stan, I, I have this question for you. How are you? <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, cool. So if let, let's say Robit and Polygon execute well and this thesis played, plays out the way we expect it to, what sort of upsides could we expect to see on both tokens um, 2024, early 2025, when the bull market is in full swing? I, I mean, mean the all pack range, it doesn't have to be exact because nobody really knows what happens. I, I, I would say like, if you want to know the price targets on Robit, go read our reports. Like we have a uh, long-term <laughs> investment thesis on Robit. And I honestly don't have these targets in my head right now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, go, go read the reports. I think I yeah. can link to the reports in, in actual, in the descriptions uh, in this YouTube video, go read the reports if you want our Robit price targets. All right, cool. Mal, let's take your question to Stan. I know we sort of touched on it before, but say, for example, Stan, you had, uh, look at the overall crypto market, all the assets we look at at Cryptonary, all the assets everybody's interested in. If you had five spots to buy up your cryptocurrencies, yeah? So say you're going to go for BTC, Ethereum. Do, does, sorry, Matic and RLB fit in that top five for you going forward into the next bull run, do you think? Um, I think RLB definitely, I think that would be probably like, it wouldn't be the top three, you know, I think it's too low of a market cap for that. I think it sits around, you know, like 500 million. There's still quite some upside for Robit, I think. So it would probably be on the lower end, like let's say the fourth asset or the fifth. Um, for Polygon, Matic, I don't see it like as a long-term hold in the bull market. What I more see it as is like a swing trade because I know this Polygon 2.0 upgrade is coming. And actually one thing I forgot to mention is um, FTX has also been selling a lot of Matic over the past few months and they're almost done selling their entire stack. So that's also like a catalyst I'm looking at, like once they are, you know, off the order books of Matic, like selling 20 million, 17 million Matic a day, that will also make price go up in my opinion, because a lot of these traders will be looking to long again when they know that FTX is not their counterparty on the other side, just dumping tokens. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, that's more like a swing well, I trade I would uh, want to hold. I would probably look to accumulate when Bitcoin is like at the lower end of the range right now. So we're trading between 35 and 38K. Let's say Bitcoin gets like another one of those dips to the lower end of the range. So like 35, 36, I think I would be interested in like whole, buying Matic there and then holding it potentially into like the Bitcoin ETF announcement um, in January. And then I would look to sell as these big announcements of Polygon like are announced. So I would just try to sell to people that are buying the news on those days, you know? Yeah, I think that's something you mentioned in the report, actually, like buy the rumor, sell the news. So you're buying now exactly. when many people are not paying attention. Exactly. That's that's the plan. Like, I don't see it as something I would hold into like the entire year, more uh, more of a swing trade. All right, cool. 
All right, it's been great talking to you, Stan and Mel, um, about this smart money report, what the waves are doing regarding Matic and, and Robit. And I think most of our viewers will find maximum value from this. If you're watching this on YouTube, the description, you'll find a link to this report there. Make sure you click it and go read it on the website. If you're reading, if you're watching this right within the reports, make sure you scroll all the way down and read through the rest of the reports. This conversation is just to provide some context around Stan's research, but the, the, the middle of the matter is actually in the report. Stan, it's always nice talking to you. Mel, thanks for coming on the show. I hope you guys no have problem. a wonderful day ahead. No problem. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.